Well, good morning, chat. Hopefully the day is the day is treating you well. You've woken up and are having a nice a nice solid morning. Oh boy. The year is going by quickly. Already July 17th. My god. We'll be in 2020 soon. We've got a whole election season coming up. Lots of exciting things. Oh, we're very future focused this morning. Lots of uh, very topics to discuss. I don't know if uh, many of you are aware, but Elon Musk last night uh, told us all how we're going to become trans. Not with dilators, but with microchips. Oh, I'm looking forward to the future. I can't wait to have my brain plugged into a computer. And I'm sure nothing terrible will happen with that. So I thought we'd take a look at uh, Musk's presentation, some of it at least. Some of the news coverage surrounding it. And of course, some of the blowback. Because you got to get you got to get the uh, everyday man's opinion on this. Talking about Mr. David Ike. Oh, he's got warnings. He's got warnings for us all about the terrible, terrible future that awaits us. Oh, exciting, exciting times. Now I don't know. I I've just recently started browsing different boards. You know, the longer you're around, you kind of hop from one thing to the next. You start off on something like B, and then you know, a few later, a few years later, you're on V. And then, uh, you know, you end up on pole, and pole's fun for like two or three years, four years. It starts to get old. So I've, I've expanded out a little bit. We're looking around a little bit to find greener pasture, somewhere that's got some good old-fashioned shit posting, Somewhere that, that just has that energy, that energy that a yo, or like a, a low user base has. Where can you find that? I found that on Biz. I've, I don't even invest in cryptocurrencies. I, I have no interest in playing with Monopoly money. But I can't stop browsing that fucking board. I can't stop lurking it. People, it's the most bipolar place that exists on the internet, and it is, it's beautiful. One minute, somebody's talking about how many Lamborghinis they're going to own. And then, in the span of 20 minutes, they're talking about the grade of rope they're going to use to tie around their neck to commit suicide. How is that not fantastic? Oh, I've been, I've been getting very into it. There's, there's nothing more fun than watching this shit from the outside to watch people just run around, just run around freaking out about the valuation of their cryptocurrencies, especially when you don't put any money into it. Because fuck it, somebody becomes a billionaire, whatever, great for them. <laughs> but if their world collapses because they've, you know, refinanced their house so they can buy some of those, uh, those delicious shit coins, well, that's funny. That's funny. So with that in mind, I'd like to ask Chad, I don't know how many of you invest. I don't know how many of you play the crypto market. But <laughs> what would you, what, how many linking heirs with, is that what you would call it? I'm not even sure what you would call it. How many of you holding right now? <laughs> how is that working out for you? I've, again, I've only been watching this for a week. I've only been invested in watching this for a week. But watching people's hopes and dreams get crushed in real time is, it's a hell of a thing. <laughs> it's a hell of a thing as people try to convince themselves that everything's okay and it's not going tits up. You're gonna make it. You're gonna make it. You're gonna. You're gonna be a millionaire one day. You just gotta hold. You just gotta hold on to that shit and ignore all the bad news that's out there. Fuck it. <laughs> Who cares? Who cares if Sergey sells all his shit? Just trust the plan. Oh, Sergey. Sergey, why are you doing this to me? I refinanced. I refinanced my house. I bought all those precious little link tokens. Trust the plan. Hold it. Hold it. I sold everything I own. I've sold everything, Sergey. Please, oh God, all my money is invested in Link. I don't. Smart contracts sound impressive. I don't even know what that does. I don't. Oracle solutions. This is all. These are all <laughs> confusing terms to me. But it sounds impressive, Sergey. Please, please. I named my child Link. I told my wife it's because I love Zelda. But the truth, Sergey, is I named it after your your product. Please don't fuck me. Please stop. Stop dumping. Sergey, Sergey, why are you doing this to me? The price, the, why does the price keep going down? I'm going to kill myself, Sergey. I don't want to work at McDonald's. Why are you doing this to me? Oh, <laughs> it's just brutal. Uh, you know, I, and again, I don't know shit about any of this. That's the fun part. It has no, it has no effect on me. It has zero impact on me and that's the kind of thing you want you want to be able to watch this shit happen from the outside but not have to worry about it uh, <laughs> I've started I've I, like it's so weird 
I've started paying attention to this shit. I'm looking on, what is it, Coinbase? Looking at the prices just to see, just to see how is that, how are those investments working out? Oh, cryptocurrencies, the future must be doing well. I've seen, I've seen it in the news. Lots of great news about it. You know, Trump, <laughs> Trump shitting on it. I'm sure hurt a little bit. You know, Tether accidentally printing, was it, 5 billion uh, token safe coins, whatever they're called. Oopsie. Decimal point was in the wrong place. Our stable coin backed a dollar for a dollar. Oops, accidentally printed five billion of them. But trust us, guys. It's okay. It's okay. Just trust us. Hold. Oh, don't don't hold. Okay. Everything's gonna be. Everything's coming up roses here. Let me let me pull this up here. Okay. Oh, this is what I've been watching. This this chain link shit. I don't even. I can't read the white paper. I don't know. What the fuck's a white paper? What the fuck's a smart contract? Oracle Solutions. It's all so, it sounds so fancy. Where do I send my, who do I give my money to? Where do, do give me a mailing address. Let me send that check out right now. It's down 44 cents. Well, I mean, fuck. Okay. Well, it's down 98 cents. But trust me, it's, things are looking up. Oh, see, look, look, it, it gained from, oh, no, wait, it's crashed. It's just dropping down in the span of weeks. Oh, this is not good. Well, Bitcoin must be doing well. <laughs> Drop a 10%. That hurts a little bit. What about Ethereum? Ethereum? How, how are we doing Ethereum? Oh, just down 30%. Oh, no, make that 26%. Well, if we look at it, you got to expand out. You can't just look at, can't look at a small, a small little blurb. Got to look at the whole thing. <laughs> down 60%. Oh, just keep holding. It's gonna hit. Brighter days are coming. Okay, things are things are looking up. Maybe my Litecoin futures are are looking better. Oh, see, look, it's rising there. Okay. Oh, we got some good news here. Well, maybe not the best news, but okay. Could the news could be better? Down forty percent. <laughs> Who puts their money into this shit? It's gambling. <laughs> Go play roulette. You have better odds. Oh. God bless the business board. Oh, the amount of laughs I've had over the last week. Just just the amount of screaming Wojaks and people filling out McDonald's applications. Uh, it's amazing. <laughs> this shit. Oh, I'm so glad I don't invest in this stuff. I mean, I get it. If you got in on the ground floor on what, Bitcoin, when it was a fucking penny apiece, you're, you're, you're fucking whistling to yourself as you're walking down the street with wheelbarrows full of money. <laughs> but it's all those people that heard the stories about the motherfuckers with wheelbarrows full of money that ended up getting fucked. And just watching the cope, the heavy amounts of cope, the heavy, heavy amounts of cope when it comes to it is amazing. I mean, I'm not seeing good news really anywhere when I look around here. <laughs> down 26, down 34%. Uh, you know, it's, it's, oh, come on there. Can't be all bad. <laughs> 49% loss in a month. Oh. Chat, you tell me. So there's got to be, you got to, there got to be some uh, Bitcoin millionaires in chat here. <laughs> Why am I misreading this? Why is everything going tits up? Why does everything look terrible? And don't just tell me, hold. <laughs> that's, that's not a good enough answer for the mystery of what the fuck is going on here. Oh, pump and dumps. A lot of pump. I've, I've heard that term now. I've been listening to that term for a while. <laughs> pump and dumps. Oh yeah, that's, uh, I also like that strategy too, the buy high, sell low. It's that's smart thinking. Let's not invest in let's not invest in a real stock market. I want digital coins, and I want to buy them high and I want to sell them low. That's how you. That's how you do it. <laughs> Everybody's saying hold. Oh God damn! I don't know. I like the board. I like laughing at the conversations they have and just watching this. It's got to be nerve wracking. Imagine putting in thousands of dollars into this stuff and. You got that hope, that hope this, this is going to be the next big thing. You're going to make so much money off of this. And then, and then the guy that made it exit scams on you. And then the guy that made it just keeps dumping and dumping and dumping. And the price keeps sinking and sinking and sinking. And you're just like, oh, God, what building am I going to throw myself off of today? How am I going to end, end this farce? I can't, I can't cope. I can't deal with it. I've, I just had to get that. I've been enjoying watching this. For all the people that are into the digital coins and the Bitcoin shit, and you've made a lot of money, good for you. I'm, gl I'm glad that it was a success for you. I'm just watching a lot of people freak out, especially over the last week, just, just from paying attention to it. <laughs> Freaking out about Tether, 
freaking out about Chainlink, freaking out about Bitcoin. Governments up their ass talking about uh, intervention and regulation and new laws. And I'm sure Facebook and Libra, their their horrible fucking uh, approach to a digital coin. I'm sure, you know, that's that's nightmarish. And that's what's got the uh, government's uh, hankles up. <laughs> but I'm uh, just watching it from the outside, not having to deal with it. Good times. A coach coin for the win? <laughs> You gotta. You can't even. You know. Uh, you can't even uh, exchange that into U.S. dollars. It's got to go to Ukrainian first. You're getting hit twice with fees on that. Oh, chat. Ah, oh, times are changing. The future is a coming. People are using digital coins now. Cryptocurrencies king. Everybody's loving it. Smart contracts, guys. Got to keep holding. And there's no better way coming up, at least, when it comes to uh, all this digital money, all these cryptocurrencies. I mean, if you want to be the fastest, if you want to, if you want to beat the bots when it comes to trading and selling and buying on the market, you're gonna need that digital interface shit. We're gonna need to go Elon Musk on this motherfucker. <laughs> and we're gonna need to be prepared. Transhumanism is gonna give you a leg up when it comes to your portfolios and how you try to. We eke those margins out to make a profit. Uh, as Elon Musk told us <laughs> last night on his amazing stream that just kind of popped up from fucking nowhere, where he's like, hey guys, uh, hey, just wanted to give everybody, hey, heads up, heads up everybody. Uh, Elon Musk here, super rich, a crazy rich guy. Um, I'm going to put microchips in your fucking heads and uh, you're going to like it. And if you got a, if you got a fucking problem with that, uh, eat me. Uh, eat me. Eat my dick. I don't care. I mean, Elon Musk, I'm worth billions of dollars. He's a real billionaire, too. Not a uh, Epstein billionaire, who, by the way, turns out only half a billion dollars. Uh, when they added all his assets up for this lawsuit and looked into his financing, half a billion. Not a billionaire. Uh, <laughs> Jeffrey Epstein is only a millionaire now. That's with all his properties and stocks and cash on hand and all of that. Man lied to us. I feel, I feel betrayed. Because that's what uh, people with egg-shaped dicks do. They lie to the general population. Shameful. Absolutely shameful. So I've got an article queued up here. We'll read this about Musk's uh, new technology. And then we'll take a look at the some of the live stream. At least the presentation by the Asian dude uh, that was part of it, kind of explaining the technology a little more in depth. Let me pull this up. Here we go. Elon Musk unveils Neuralink's plan for brain-reading threads and a robot to insert them. Oh, I'm sorry. Hold on. I can't forget begging for shekels. There we go. I knew I forgot something. And since we're talking about transhumanism, let me just set the mood, make it proper here. Oh, 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 no. Where did it go? Where did it go? Um, uh-oh. Why is that not showing up now? That's not right. Oh, you're killing me here. I had... Uh, uh, oh, no. It just... It disappeared completely. What the fuck? Oh, this is disastrous. Hold on. It's not even... It's not even showing up. Well, fuck me. Never mind. I had a cute little thing to go up with it, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Uh, let's take a look at Musk in the future. Not... Not for humans yet. Yet. Okay. Elon Musk Neuralink, the secretive company developing brain-machine interfaces, showed off some of the technology it has been developing for the public for the first time. The goal to eventually begin implanting devices in paralyzed humans, allowing them to control phones or computers. The first big advance is the flexible threads, which are less likely to damage the brain than the materials currently used in brain-machine interfaces. These threads also create the possibility of transferring higher volumes of data, according to a white paper uh, credited to Elon Musk and Neuralink. Uh, the abstract notes that the system could include as many as 3,072 electrodes per array distributed across 96 threads. Uh, okay. <laughs> the threads are four to six, uh, is it micrometers in width? Which makes them considerably thinner than a human hair. In addition to developing the threads, Neuralink's other big advance is a machine that automatically embeds them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wait till you see this fucking machine. It looks like a sewing machine. Elon Musk wants you to lay down on a table and stick a fucking sewing machine over your head and start injecting shit into your brain. It's pretty amazing. Uh, Musk gave a big, or a big presentation at Neuralink's research Tuesday night, though he said that it wasn't simply to hype it. 
The main reason for doing this presentation is recruiting, Musk said, asking people to go apply to work there. Max Hodak, president of Neuralink, also came on stage and admitted that he wasn't originally sure this technology was a good idea, but that Musk convinced him it would be possible in the future. Scientists from Neuralink hope to use a laser beam to get through the skull rather than drilling holes. They used, uh, they said in an interview with the New York Times, early experiments will be done with uh, neuroscientists at Stanford University, according to the report. We hope to have uh, this in human patients by the end of next year. Okay, this guy's ready to roll this shit out. He's going to strap you to a table, drill a hole in your head with a high-powered laser, and put a sewing machine over you that's going to start start threading fucking uh <laughs> start threading materials through your brain so you can activate your smartphone with a thinking thought during a Q&A at the end of the presentation must reveal results that the rest of the team hadn't realized he would a monkey has been able to control a computer with its brain <laughs> it's, i just like the idea of Elon Musk in some secretive laboratory in the middle of nowhere just cutting the heads <laughs> cutting the the skulls off of monkeys and just putting electrodes in there and then screaming <laughs> screaming at the monkey to turn the computer on the monkey was able to control a computer with its brain how what what did it do on the computer are you sure when the monkey wasn't screaming in agony it accidentally turned the computer on it's not going to be uh it's not going to be suddenly Neuralink will have the neural inter uh, neural lace and start taking over people's brains must said ultimately he wants to achieve a symbiosis with artificial intelligence that even in a benign excuse me even in a benign scenario humans would be left behind hence he wants to create a technology that allows a merging with ai he later added we are in a br we are a brain in a vat and that vat is our skull and so the goal is to read neural spikes from the brain the first paralyzed person to receive and it goes over the history uh, the guy nagel basically got the old fashioned spikes in his brain uh, known as brain gate uh, here's a picture of a mouse with a <laughs> fucking microchip stapled on its skull. Uh, here are the, the threads they're talking about. That's a human fingertip to give you an idea of the size that they're talking about and the flexibility associated with it. So it's not um, <laughs> it's not tearing your brain apart. Oh, here it is. I want you... Can I, can I pull this up? Will this pull this up? Is that coming on stream? Okay. I want you to imagine you go into the doctor's office <laughs> because you've got... I don't know. You've got MS. Or you had an accident and your spinal cord was injured. And he says, oh, hop on the table. And they wheel this abomination out <laughs> and tell you to hold still. It looks like something, it, it, it looks like they pulled it off a factory line. Like this was putting car doors on vehicles or something. And they just retrofitted it to staple shit into your brain. <laughs> it's absolutely terrifying. No, no, trust me. This sewing machine's going to make you next level. We're talking transhumanism, my, bo my dude. You're, you're good. You're good. Just trust it. Uh, okay. Finally, the paper says that Neuralink has developed a custom chip that is better able to read, clean up, and amplify signals from the brain. Right now, it can only transmit data via a wired connection. It uses USB-C. But ultimately, the goal is to create a system that can work wirelessly. What a nightmare. What a fucking nightmare. I hope this has, like, a, uh, a hard switch. I, I, if you're going to put shit in my brain, if you're going to put a wireless interface into my fucking brain, I want a switch or a lever or a wire. I want something outside of me that I can pull, plug, pluck, turn, twist, whatever, that shuts that fucking wireless functionality down. Because the last thing I want is some spastic fuck on the internet hacking into my brain and doing God knows what. I mean, that's they're, they're reading brain signals and then they're uh, interacting with those signals to determine... What it is you want to do? Oh, turn the computer on, move your arm, do this, do that. I don't want some hot wired shit in my skull that can be fucked with wirelessly. That sounds like a massively bad idea. There has to be a, there has to be a fail safe. There has to be something outside that you can click that turns it off. Uh, that wireless goal will be embedded in a product that Neuralink calls the N1 sensor designed to be embedded inside a human body and transmitted its data wirelessly. Uh, it may read fewer neurons than the current USB-based prototype. Neuralink intends to implant four of these sensors, three in the motor areas and one in the Somoto sensor area. It will connect wirelessly to an external device mounted behind the ear, 
which will contain only a battery. It will be controlled through an iPhone app. Oh, brilliant. Like Apple wasn't obnoxious enough. Now it's got, you know, now I've got to, I've got to use the iPhone store to download the fucking app to make my brain work properly. That's a hell of a marketing campaign. I'm sure Steve Jobs would have loved that. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you, I'm sorry, Mr. Paralyzed. I'm sorry, guy that was in a horrific accident. Do you want to walk again? Better buy an iPhone. There's a whole FDA process we have to go through. We haven't even done that yet. Matthew McDougall, head surgeon of the Neuralink, who appeared dressed in scrubs, said on uh, Tuesday that the primary goal, ultimately, they want it to be something more like LASIK eye surgery. Well, that's a good thing to compare it to with the horror stories about LASIK eye surgery, including eliminating the need for general anesthesia. We want you fully awake and conscious as we uh, fucking burn a hole through your skull and turn the sewing machine on. The first patients wouldn't even have that non-invasive experience, though. Uh, right now, though, the company is working with rats to make sure the platform is stable. Well, Musk just said they were working with monkeys, so obviously they're farther along than rats. If it works, it's promising a high bandwidth brain connection implanted via robot surgery. The uh, connection made using this thin, flexible threads will allow many neurons' activities to be recorded. So this is the big, this is the big thing. And Musk did this uh, via a live stream last night. I think it was like two hours long, talking about the future. The future is here. Neural interface is going to be a reality. Oh my God, we're going ghost in the shell with this shit. All right, we're, we're going to do so much crazy shit, you're not even going to know what's coming up. I understand the applications. I mean, there are fascinating applications. People that are truly injured or sick or incapacitated in a way that modern medical science cannot treat. Uh, this is amazing. This is a godsend. It's a boon for them. People that are paralyzed, people that have uh, neurodegenerate uh, disorders or... Um, you know, muscle disorders, uh, where the myelin is stripped away. You know, people that can't function, that can't control their limbs, that can't interact with the world around them. This is a big thing. You get a neural interface put in you, and then maybe you build an exosuit or an exoskeleton to wrap around the limbs, and now you're controlling the exoskeleton, which moves the limbs, so you've bypassed the neurological system, and now the paralyzed guy can walk again. He can throw a frisbee, he can hold his kid. He, he finally has a way to interact with the world. That's amazing. I, I can understand why that is so appealing. Uh, you know, mental disorders. Uh, you know, I, there was a Japanese guy doing research, I think it was like eight to ten years ago, where he was trying to interpret dreams. And he was, he was trying to read data from the brain to see what people maybe would be dreaming about. And one of the ways he tested it was he would have people focus on a letter, and then he would try to read the brain activity and then recreate what they were seeing, right? And so if you looked at the letter A for 10 minutes, this machine would interpret it, and then it would show you the letter A <clears throat> from the signal. It, it just weird shit. And I always thought, oh, you know, that's going to be cool later on down the line. Something like this might be cool later on down the line. Because somebody that's schizophrenic and is hearing or seeing voices, well, if you've got a device that interfaces with the brain, that can read signals and stimulus, maybe it can recreate that. I mean, maybe a machine like this or a device like this, not only could it interpret those signals and show it to other people so they can see the crazy shit and hear the crazy shit you're subjected to but maybe they can cancel it out somehow and interfere with that particular thing to make it so you don't suffer from it anymore no more having to use pills or chemicals you know so i get it there's there's a lot of hype around a technology like this there are a lot of applications that could be amazing but the idea of implanting a neural interface that's wireless that could be fucked with, and who knows the effect that that's going to have on somebody. This is the basic bitch beginner level stuff. They haven't even got to the fancy shit. You know, the fancy shit of making you think faster, access information better, store more information. Uh, you, they're they're going to go crazy with it if it ever really comes to fruition. And the thought of people going around fucking with people, uh, who, I mean, like, who knows? It's really going to be sci-fi level shit, anime level shit. Oh, wait, you know, who needs VR or AR? I can just transfer, you know, my commands and I can uh, take in the stimulus from some robot body half a mile away. Yeah, they, they're going to do crazy shit with it. So they did this stream last night. Let me let me grab it. Uh, where they talked a little bit. Of, and again, it's a lot of science jargon. I, I don't understand any of it. I'm not going to pretend I do. Uh, but let me find the little Asian guy that talked a bit oh. about it. Just to show you uh, kind of what the fuck they're doing. I don't know, Chad, you tell me. Do you think this is a, do you, do you have a happy, good feeling about where this is going? Or do you think this is going to be 
just some really dark shit coming down the pipeline. Are we talking Deus Ex future? Are we gonna are we gonna be dealing with some really just horrendous shit that's gonna come and make everybody absolutely fucking miserable? I'll wait for chat to to catch a press F for our brains. Well, that's that's a potential. Oh, everybody wants to get augmented. Oh, I hear you. Oh boy, I want those superpowers. Oh, there's no escape. Oh, do you think that people are like, wow, well, you don't have to do it. Wait till they make it standardized. Wait till you're competing with people that have it. You won't be able to compete. If they're faster, smarter, can access information, can perform a task better, and you're, you know, just natural you, you're going to have to compete. Wait till they tie that shit to the financial system. <laughs> that's, that's where Ike and all of those come in. It's going to be fun watching them react to it. Oh, hello, Crypto World donated. I love you, Daddy Jim. Oh, well, thank you. Oh, I got a sent a bunch of diamonds. Well, this is obviously, this is a man that is Bitcoin rich. Thank you. Uh, wore the hat in public. Some dude wanted one uh, from Thorkel. Oh, sent him over the shop. Oh, boy, hat sales. Oh, I don't invest in crypto. I invest in apparel. Oh, I sell, I'm selling those hats. Oh, let me just check one last thing here. And then I'll pull up. I will pull up our thing. Okay. Uh, Mr. Kyle, or Mr. Kelly. Hey, Jim, keep up the good work. Thank you for your service. Yours truly, a fellow Suicuck from Kylo Dante. We writhe maggots feasting on this zombie civilization, finding joy in the taste of the rot, laughing when an eye burst, when the jaw falls off. But when will we die? Why won't it die, Jim? Oh, you can't kill that which is undead, I guess. And finally, from Ronson. So when is your Minecraft Let's Play going live? Well, oh, that's the future. We've cycled back to an era on the internet where the future is Minecraft. Get ready. It's coming. You're going to you're going to get that. All right. I think I've got the the Neuralink video pulled up. Uh, we'll take Oh, let me make I'm going to queue it up to the exact time code here. What was the little Asian dude's name? D, D, I think it is his name really DJ CO? I guess it is. All right. Uh, let me let me put this up here. I think that should yeah, that's good enough. Thank you, Vanessa. My name is DJ Sa, and I'm the director of Implant Systems at Neuralink. My team focuses on building chips and systems to get neural signals recorded from our electrodes out of the brain, and also to put information into the brain. Before Neuralink, I was at U Okay, I just want you to really, again, I, I know. Oh my God, Jim, you're, you're paranoid. You're paranoid. And he didn't just say get information out of the brain. What are you trying to do to make it work faster? you know, to interface, to send a signal to a device to make it respond to you. It's send information into the brain. <laughs> it's just, it creeps me out a little bit. I'm going to be honest. UC Berkeley, where I co-invented Neural Dust, which is a technology to power and communicate with small implantable systems using ultrasound waves. Typical chip lifecycle from design to verification to tape out is approximately one to several years. At Neuralink, we had the ability to co-design our chip with the rest of the system. And the tight feedback loop from this organization has enabled our small team of analog and digital chip designers to tape out a new design every three months on average. You hear how fast these fuckers are advancing? I mean, they took something he said that took a year to seven years and cut it down to three months. Going through iterations every three months to advance it faster and faster, to get that technology up to pace to implant it into your brains. Oh, God. What a nightmare. Oh, I just wanted to just give you, I, I, again, if you want the technical jargon, if you really want to watch the whole entirety of the live stream itself, it's up on Neuralink's uh, YouTube channel. And it's literally called Neuralink Livestream. It's about three hours long. You can listen to all the amazing technical stuff. It is you know, fascinating, but well beyond me. Uh, but I found it uh, terrifying. <laughs> and when people were discussing this, uh, when the live stream was going on and talking about all these events, uh, they kept bringing up, they kept bringing up David Icke. And there's a particular video, it's like 10 minutes long. Uh, it will be done by 2030 with Icke talking about all the spooky things they're going to do. <laughs> Some of it, eerily enough, lines up with this. Uh, so I thought we could, we could take a look at this. Now, David Icke, for those of you that don't know, um, He's a freedom fighter, freeing us from those goddamn dirty reptilians. I'm not sure if you're aware of the reptilian takeover. You're going to be. 
because we're going balls deep in that shit after we watch a little light. I'm talking about we need to get the real story here. <laughs> we need to go to above top secret and find out about those goddamn dirty lizard people. Uh, but for now, let's let's take a look at Mr. Ike and his warning to us about what the future is about to entail and see how accurate it sounds after the news about this neural interface. By 2030, the connections will be start to be made between artificial intelligence and the human, human brain. We've been through a, a, a process of preparation of getting people, first of all, stage one, addicted to technology that they hold, holdables, smartphones, tablets. That, I mean, that's basically achieved. I mean, you just have to walk through a city and you see the, the addiction. And they're targeting specifically the young. Why? Because the young of today and uh, the children of today are going to be the adults when they want to bring this AI um, connection in full blown. For that to happen, they have to get people addicted to technology to the point where they'll accept it and where it's the most natural thing in the world. And it's happening in front of our eyes. The first stage is to get people addicted to technology to the point where, at the most extreme, they'll get up in the dead of night and they'll, will, they'll queue, standing line, outside an Apple store to get the first uh, of the new technology. And what they want eventually, and not too distant into the future, is people basically lining up to be connected to AI. Now, if, if you remember from the article, and even if you watch the Neuralink live stream, you know, he keeps talking about being connected to AI. He's not just... You know, when you hear Neuralink, right, it's a uh, it's an interface. It allows you to communicate with devices outside of yourself in a quicker fashion. Uh, be that an exoskeleton so you can walk because you're paralyzed, but or a more uh, like in a, a more general use application, interfacing with your computer or your smartphone or whatever. But even Musk himself keeps bringing up AI, artificial intelligence. And Musk, one of his selling points was, you know, when we see this implemented in people within the next year and a half and we start to scale it up and get it more advanced, we want you to be able to co-process or interface with artificial intelligence. We don't want you just using devices. <laughs> we want to augment you and make you smarter, faster, better, which is spookily enough what Ike is talking about. I'm getting scared. Put your tinfoil on, folks. Call up Alex Jones and tell him to bring his guns to protect us. The lizard future is upon us. In the same way that people in Sweden now are having parties to celebrate someone being microchipped, right? All this connects. So the next stage, because the, the idea is to get in the body, the next stage is to um, get on the body. So we went from just holdables, we went to wearables, we went to Bluetooth and Google Glass and Apple Watches and all these other gadgets that go on the body now even what they call electronic tattoos that are basically microchips on the skin. And the next stage is to go in the body, which is already starting in places like um, Sweden. And people like Ray Kurzweil, who is a Google executive, I mean, Google and Facebook are really at the cutting edge of this stuff. People think it's a social media operation only or a, a search engine only. No, no, no. Um, this whole Google group now, which is given the name Alphabet, um, uh, are absolutely at the cutting edge of this whole AI technology. You know, and he's not even wrong about that. I mean, we know about the bots that uh, these companies develop and how they use them on the internet, but even outside of that, I mean, Google bot, was it Boston Dynamics? So, I mean, you've got these companies, uh, Facebook uh, ended up, what, what the fuck was the VR thing that they threw all their money at, Oculus? Like, the, these big corporations are just soaking up all these other little companies that are doing all these different tech things into this massive conglomerate that's going to produce the ultimate technology. And it maybe must beat them to the draw on that, but <laughs> could you imagine a neural interface, a neural link or brain gate or whatever it's going to be called? Could you imagine buying one from Google, going to your local hospital, <laughs> probably be the first step, and having a Google interface put into your brain? <laughs> Jesus, what a nightmare. So is Amazon, so is Amazon. Amazon's uh, uh, got contracts worth 
hundreds of millions of dollars with the CIA and the Pentagon for cloud services and stuff. Yeah, they have massive data services. Massive, yeah. The consumers don't see. So the idea is to, is to take this on. And what Kurzweil is saying, and he, he claims an 80% success rate in, in his predictions of incoming technology and when it will come in. But, you know, if you know when it's going to come in, then you've got a great chance of predicting it. I mean, you know, it's like, if you know when a, a stock market's going to fall, because the people you are connected to are going to make it fall, well, you're going to get out just before it falls, and you're going to get in just before you know they're going to push it up. I mean, it, you know, you don't have to be, you know, Nostra Bloody Damas if you know the script. You know, I, 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 now that I think about it, this actually does remind me of something. Let me pull this up, um, just one second. What Musk is doing right now reminds me of something. Uh, let me see if I can find the video. Oh boy, hold on. Oh, now I'm not going to be able to find it, am I? Oh, hold on, one second, chat. I'm not prepared. Oh, terrible. Uh, well, I guess I guess this is what I'm looking for. We have. No, that's that's not. Come on. I will find it. Sorry, chat. Uh, da, 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 da. Hi, y'all. It's Lacey. No, I don't want to listen to you, Lacey. Why can't I find the original video? Did they pull it down because they didn't like people freaking out over? That might be it. Your kids probably have one of these. Wow, what the fuck? Why can't I find the original, the original one? Hold on. Oh, boy. Oh, I'm fucking it up here. I th wow, they might have actually pulled down the original video. We have something. Okay, whatever. You know what? Fuck it. We'll watch this one. Uh, but what Musk is doing kind of reminds me of this. Somebody put out a, uh, you know, a what-if scenario of somebody that says they've got a great new technology and how could it ever be abused and then everything goes tits up. Uh, but it's related to drones. But it does remind me of this. We have something much bigger. Your kids probably have one of these, right? Not quite. Hell of a pilot? No. That skill is all AI. It's flying itself. Its processor can react a hundred times faster than a human. Stochastic motion is an anti-sniper feature. Just like any mobile device these days, it has cameras and sensors, and just like your phones and social media apps, it does facial recognition. Inside here is three grams of shaped explosive. This is how it works. Did you see that? That little bang is enough to penetrate the skull and destroy the contents. That is an airstrike of surgical precision. It's one of a range of products. Trained as a team, they can penetrate buildings, cars, trains, evade people, bullets, pretty much any countermeasure. They cannot be stopped. Now, I said this was big. Why? Because we are thinking big. Watch. A $25 million order now buys this. Enough to kill half a city, the bad half. Nuclear is obsolete. Take out your entire enemy, virtually risk-free. Just characterize him, release the swarm, and rest easy. 
Uh, well, that's that's the basic gist of it. Uh, again, that's just part of the video. The the whole video was like, oh, here's a here's a a tech talk. Oh, oh, where did it go? Where did it? There we go. Uh, here's a tech talk about what's coming up, uh, and then they show how it goes wildly out of control. That's the feeling I get from Musk and his adventures in neural interfaces. Reminds me of that video. Like he's all excited. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be a boon for society. And I've already got like a really bad feeling about where where it's gonna go. So I don't think David Icke is, you know, completely crazy to be like, uh, you know, guys, this is uh, this is not gonna be good. Bad times are coming. But we'll go back to Mr. Ike. Got about seven more, uh, six more minutes of this. This is the sales pitch, and this is why they're telling you. The sales pitch is when we connect to artificial intelligence, um, we'll be superhuman. That's what the sales pitch is. That's his sales pitch. Right. That's going to be the sales pitch. Alexa, all yeah, these things. Yeah. What you've got um, is the idea that connect to AI and you'll become superhuman intelligent. No, you'll become subhuman intelligent. You'll become a vehicle for artificial intelligence. And whoever controls artificial intelligence will control every the perceptions of every mind that it's connected to. Which is, which is true. You know, I mean, he does bring up a good point. Think about where you are right now. Where are we as a, a, a society? Rise up, gamers. Rise up. Where are we as a society when it comes to our technology? I mean, every device that's really being put out onto market, be it a smartphone or Alexa and all of this shit, it's all connected. It's all hot mic. There are cameras in every piece of it. You don't really have any privacy. While crypto is great, it's this digital currency that's connected to a larger system. It's like it's taking away bits and pieces of your privacy and your ability to control things and to live your own life. And it wants it to be connected into something bigger. And now here comes Neural Interface. And, you know, Ike is saying, you're basically a flesh suit for a really smart AI. And you're just not going to know it. You're going to think you're co-processing with it. You're going to think you're using its ability to do calculations and perform functions. But really what it's doing is using you because you're fucking stupid. Because now you're going to rely on it to Wikipedia and Google information for you rather than learning it yourself. You're going to be subservient to it. It's going to drive you around like a fucking biological car. And you're going to be so goddamn dumb you're not even going to know what's happening. If you're going to make a physical connection with AI, you're not going to do that on a mass scale until you've made a psychological connection. And um, there is a, a process, uh, a psychological process, which is known as preemptive programming. Preemptive programming is, is, is this. You're going to usher in a world that is so different, so dramatically different to what anyone's been used to, that you're going to have an obvious resistance purely by the chasm of difference between um, the world people are used to and the world you're taking them into. A resistance that says, hold on a minute, you, you, you want to do what? What? I, 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 what? So you prepare them for it through preemptive programming. You put out a stream of movies out of elite controlled Hollywood. You put out television programs, you put out books, you put out all these things that basically portray the world you want to take people into. This is why you've seen so many movies about control by robots, control by technology of... Uh, I got it, guys. Here's the deep conspiracy that Ike is too afraid to tell you about. The people behind this are the Japanese. They've been planning this shit since the end of World War II to get revenge on the West. And the way they're going to do it is preemptively program us with anime and video games to make us want to live in a future society where we'll let Elon, Mu or Elon Musk put threads in our brains so Google can tell us the answer to 2 plus 2. Those fucking Japanese... I, did, I never trusted them, okay? I knew they were up to something. It's all starting to make sense. This is the long con. These motherfuckers have been working on this for 80 years. 80 years, damn near, to get that fucking revenge. You had to drop two bombs on them. Now the world's going to pay for it. Um, synthetic humans 
you have the dystopian society being portrayed and portrayed and portrayed. And what that's doing, it's making the subconscious, to an extent the conscious mind, familiar with the world you want to usher in. So when you literally start to bring it in, there's not that chasm that there would have been before. There is almost a familiarity with it because you prepared people by portraying it over and over again in movies. Another part of this psychological connection with artificial intelligence, so we'll accept the outcome that I've talked about, is these Alexas and these Echoes and these so-called office assistants or personal assistants. You start to interact with them as if they're human. And now they're bringing in internet connected um, toys for kids, even little kids, and Barbie dolls. You know, as an aside, um, I remember for a while, I'd say like two or three years, it was really popular to hack into people's uh, webcams for their security systems and then use a built-in microphone feature to, to scream at them <laughs> or to fuck with classrooms or just a whole bunch of stuff. With all these AI-connected toys and toys connected to the internet that use a server to, to do functions, do all this different shit, are there any videos out there of people hacking children's toys and just making them do really horrendous things? <laughs> like, just start playing spooky music or talking in a really dark, gravelly voice. And it, uh, those have to exist. Somebody has to have done that by now. And if they have, please send me the link. <laughs> please send that link to me of children being scared as their Barbie says it's going to attack them. That they can actually have conversations with artificial intelligence. They're now bringing in these uh, robots that are uh, these synthetic robots that are looking more and more uh, uh, like humans. Uh, a lot of them coming in from, from the East. And this is a whole psychological process of familiarizing um, us with artificial intelligence to getting people to interact with it until it becomes the most natural thing in the world. By 2030, um, the connections will be start to be made between artificial intelligence and the human, human brain. And that's what it's going to look like. That's an, that's, a, that's an accurate depiction of the future that awaits you. So you get the, you get the general gist of what Mr. Ike is saying. Be, be warned. The dark days are ahead. I, I don't necessarily blame him. It's a little freaky. Uh, it's definitely freaky. I don't trust these corporations. The last thing I want is some fucking device put in my head they can wirelessly talk to. <laughs> Who knows what they're going to do with that? And it's not like you can just take it out. It's not like a fucking watch you can take off or a phone you can set down. It's inside your skull. They drilled through the bone with a laser beam. <laughs> what, are you going to take a hacksaw? Cut your skull open and remove it? Good luck with that shit. Oh, there's no return policy on this. I'm sorry, no refunds. They're going Bernie Sanders with this shit. <laughs> you are stuck with it permanently. Oh. Oh, chat. What are we going to do? Oh, I'm spooked. I'm definitely spooked, chat. I don't know. I need to buy more Link. That's, that's the only solution. I need to buy more Lincoln. Hold. It's the only way to fight against this. Uh, from Thorkel. Uh, AI living vicariously through humans. Worry time. Yeah, I'd, I'd be worried about that. From Alexandria. Remember all the videos of hacked baby monitors? Uh, yep. Well, I never saw the hacked baby monitor videos, but I did see a lot of videos where people would go on to, like, CCTV cameras and <laughs> fuck with people. So I don't know. I don't know if they're out there. I just, I would speculate that these videos of people hacking children's toys, it has to be somewhere on the internet. Uh, what do we got here? HDR to you. So Elon Musk develops Frankenstein controls. Great. Another step for CIA ga gangster communism. From Koala Dante. Frankenstein radio controls even in thin skulls of white pedigree males. Holy shit. Franklin E. Declan Esquire absolutely called it. From Joey Jojo. The sexual revolution was a mistake. The solution is a chicken in every <laughs> oven, two cars in every garage, and a big-titted Christina Hendricks-styled robot for every man. MILF bots will save the West. Well, you, do, you, you have a more positive outlook than I do. But now that you mention it, yeah, was, was Franklin E. <laughs> was, was he right? Or Francis E. Declan Esquire. Oh my God, he he actually he's like Nostradamus. 
He actually called it the only hope for a future. Uh, let me let me grab that video. I I think he might have actually predicted what's happening right now. The Frankenstein-controlled robot government communist conspiracy is actually coming to fruition, and Franklin E. Declan Esquire absolutely fucking called it. Everybody called him crazy. Who's laughing now? Look at the picture. See the skull, the part of bone removed, the master race Frankenstein radio controls, the brain thoughts broadcasting radio, the eyesight television, the Frankenstein earphone radio, the threshold brainwash radio, the latest new skull reforming to contain all Frankenstein controls, even in thin skulls of white pedigree males, visible Frankenstein controls, the synthetic nerve radio directional antenna. Okay, listen, I, I'm not even joking anymore. He has predicted this completely. Oh my god, Francis. I need to send him a free typewriter to, or typewriter to save the world. I can't... It's spooky. He was right. The loop. Make copies for yourself. There is no escape from this worse gangster police state using all of the deadly gangster Frankenstein controls. In 1965, CIA gangster police beat me bloody, dragged me in chains from Kennedy, New York Airport. Since then, I hide in forced jobless poverty, isolated, alone in this low, deadly nigger town old house. The brazen, deadly gangster police and nigger puppet underlings spray me with poison nerve gas from automobile exhausts and even lawnmowers deadly assaults even in my yard with knives even bricks and stones even deadly touch taben or electric shock flashlights even remote electronically controlled around corners projection of deadly touch tarantula spiders or even bloody murder accidents to shut me up forever with a sneak undetectable extermination even with trained parroting puppet assassins in maximum security insanity prison for writing these unforgettable Forgivable truths until my undetectable extermination. I, Francis E. Deck Esquire, 29 Maple Avenue, Hempstead, New York. I stand alone against your mad, deadly, worldwide conspiratorial gangster computer god communism. Oh my boy, he did stand alone. We all laughed at Francis. We all thought he was crazy, but he was right. One man fighting the future. Warning us. He was like a, a 1960s version of Ted Kaczynski, minus the, <laughs> minus the bombs. With wall-to-wall -wall deadly gangster protection, lifelong sworn conspirators, murder incorporated organized crime, the police and judges, the deadly sneak parroting puppet gangsters using all the gangster deadly Frankenstein controls, these hangman rope sneak deadly gangsters, the judges and the police trick, trap, rob, wreck, butcher, and murder the people to keep them terrorized in gangster Frankenstein earphone radio slavery for the communist gangster gang government and con artist parroting puppet gangster playboy scum on top the secret work of all police in order to maintain a communist closed society the same worldwide mad deadly communist gangster computer god that controls you as a terrorized gangster frankenstein earphone radio slave parroting puppet you are a terrorized member of the master race worldwide four billion eyesight television camera guinea pig communist gangster computer god master race you're living thinking mad deadly worldwide communist gangster computer god secret overall plan worldwide living death frankenstein slavery to explore and control the entire universe with the endless stairway to the stars namely the man-made inside out planets with nucleonic powered speeds much faster than the speed of light Look up and see the gangster computer god concocted new fake starry sky, the worldwide completely controlled deadly degenerative climate and atmosphere through the new world round translucent exotic gaseous envelope, which the worldwide communist gangster computer god manipulates through countless exactly positioned satellites, the new fake phony stars in the synthetic sky for ages before Frankenstein controls apoidic niggers interbreedable with apes had no alphabet, not even numerals. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I fucking love that line. It's so out there, man. <laughs> it's the best.
Before Frankenstein controls, apoidic niggers interbreedable with apes had no alphabet, not even numerals. Not even numerals. Oh, they wouldn't even let him have numbers. <laughs> oh, Francis. Oh, gone but not forgotten, buddy. Oh, your memory lives on. You were right. We should have listened. <laughs> we should have listened to you, Francis. What were we doing? Oh, we've let the world go to shit. Oh, my God. I love, I love shit like this. It never, it never gets bad. So, you know, I watched Ike's presentation, uh, well, the video, talking about where the future was going after seeing Musk's Neuralink presentation about the future of where it's going. And so I meandered on over to Above Top, <laughs> Above Top Secret, the best forum with the most factual information on the internet. And people were discussing it. <laughs> and this video gets linked. No, dude. These- and I think, I think you guys need to get, I, you need to watch this. We need to watch this. All right? Because there's some shit going down I don't think you all are prepared for. And this woke motherfucker, he's going to explain it to us about the reptilians. I know you don't know how it's connected, but they're behind everything. Like those Japanese. They've been planning and plotting for a while now. <laughs> this is a, it's a real good primer on the reptilian menace. Now, these reptilians, okay, you know, the, the whole, the Vlad Tepesh, okay, they call him Vlad the Impaler, all right, killed a lot of people, killed a lot of people, drunk their blood and all that shit, that's the, that's what uh, the idea of Dracula came from, okay, Vlad Tepesh. Uh, yeah, to pass when he impaled people and drunk they sat there and drunk their blood. Guess what? The reptilians drink blood and they eat human beings. Okay. <laughs> okay, I don't know if you caught that. All right, fact number one: reptilians they're drinking our blood and shit. Okay, shit, they drinking our blood, but they also eating our penis. <laughs> There's no fate worse in this world than a filthy goddamn reptilian. Drinking my blood and eating my dick. <laughs> Just in case you missed that. Blood and they eat human beings. Eating human penis. Goddamn fucking reptiles. Just they're cock hungry. Okay. Oh yes, they do. They do. What reptile don't eat mammals, huh? What reptile don't eat mammals? These motherfuckers are reptiles. They eat human beings. All right. Now, I ain't talking about they come snatch you out of your damn house and eat you. They have a form, okay? Just like uh, 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 San- uh, uh, the, the Sanderson chicken form. They got a form where they inform human beings, okay? And eat them. They love to eat the pineal gland, all right? Which is- You got to protect those pineal glands. <laughs> Fucking reptiles. Eating my dick, drinking my blood, eating my pineal gland. Luckily, our woke brother here in his ninja outfit is telling the world the truth about the filthy reptilian menace. It's known as your fucking third eye. All right? And other, uh, and other things in your body. Your, see, what you understand, your body creates some of those, the most powerful shit, okay? The most powerful shit. More, even more powerful than some drugs. That's why, that's what makes our behavior. That's what makes us. All right? They love feeding off human beings. Oh, oh, Chad. You know what? I, I actually, we're about an hour in. I think this is a good place to take a very quick break. I'm going to go get a drink. I promise you this channel, this channel that we're watching right now has all the woke information we have to, we, we will ever need about dick-eating reptilians. So I'm going to pause it real quick. Let me let me just uh, do this. There we go. Uh, I'm going to go grab a drink. If you need to take a piss, grab a snack, whatever. It's our, our midstream break. I'll put on a little music, a little music for our break, and then we will get back in learning about those dick-eating reptilians. <laughs> God, I fucking love the Internet. I love the fact some black dude dressed up like a ninja to tell me about dick-eating reptiles. Like, like that was his, that was his mission in life. Like, you need to know, man. 
You need to know about these dick-eating reptiles out here. Eating dicks? <laughs> They're walking through Compton eating cocks. Nobody can stop them. All right. Brothers. penises are intact they haven't been eaten by any reptilians that might be lurking out there protect yourself <laughs> if you see a lizard person cover your cock they are just voracious eaters of the dick oh, i love the fact i love the fact this dude is warning you about getting your cock eaten fantastic i have uh, uh malone dick 117 das right uh das right indeed oh dick eating aliens out there Sucking cock down like it's a fucking delicacy. I'm from Thorkill. I'm beginning to sweat a little bit here at the accuracy. I don't blame you. From Gertie D, a ninjet. I've never seen one of those. Uh, so the gay frogs live in Sweden. Uh, yeah, that's where they're that's where they're headquartered. Sir Scallywag. All women will be the first targets to lure you guys. And also JB Behemoth. 9 p.m. Eastern. Great time for us East Coast Sweetie Squads. Well, I'm glad it is working out for you. Let us get back to this informative video talking about the dangers of dick-eating reptiles out there. <laughs> Maybe he'll give us hood strategies on how to protect ourselves. And children, but they prefer motherfuckers that don't smoke, don't drink, which is usually children. Okay? The government ain't gonna tell you that reptilian beings exist. You know, I agree. Government's not going to tell you dick-eating reptiles are out there. <laughs> Hunting your children down. That's when they keep close to the vest. Don't want the populace freaking out. I, 
I could imagine if the president of Trump went on TV tomorrow and told you about dick-eating aliens, he'd probably be running for the hills. I'm going to tell you why. Because they have to complain about a lot of other shit. They'll raise a bunch of other questions. All right? So they say, fuck it, we'll handle it on our own. Even though we lose it, we'll handle it on our own. And some of them even made alliances with, 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 with ter uh, extraterrestrials for some kind of protection. Okay. All right, I'm going to go, I'm going to take this man's woke theory and make it even woker. All right, he's talking about dick-eating reptilians that are out there, that are targeting our kids. What if the government got together with major religions, and the reason they're pushing circumcision is to satiate the reptilian hunger for dick by feeding them baby foreskins? What if, what if that's the reality? It's a whole conspiracy to circumcise and feed these evil reptilian bastards so they don't attack us in the streets. I don't know. Chat, what do you think? I think that makes sense. I, th I, think, that's, I think that's what's going on. For, for, some, for some weaponry, okay? They want to cut other deals. You see what I'm saying? No, I can't intervene. I can't intervene right now. Mother, fuck that. Because if I see somebody that needs some help, I don't care what color. I'm going to help your ass. All right? If I see you can't help yourself, I'm going to help you. Because that's, that's... You feel me, nigga? If I'm walking down the street and I see a white boy and his dick is eaten by a reptilian, I'm going to help that motherfucker. <laughs> Thanks for the support. I like to know that if I'm ever attacked in the street by a dick-hungry reptile, that Mr. Ninja here is going to come in swinging some ghetto nunchucks. And save my ass. That's part of being humanity. Alright? So the fucking bullshit about extraterrestrials can't intervene because of this, because of that. Don't buy off into that shit. Don't buy off into it whatsoever. Cause we ain't no we ain't have no fucking help. And the reptilians don't see no difference between all of us, okay? They don't see no difference whatsoever. You could be the smartest fucking human being. It don't matter to them. Stop sending fucking uh, weapons to the goddamn Arabs and s s give me some weapons. Give me some fucking weapons. Give me some goddamn tanks. Give me some subs. Give me some aircraft. All right? All right. I think General here, I'm going to call him General Ninja. General Woke. <laughs> General W Ninja. The W for Woke. He's got a point. We need to send this motherfucker some tanks, aircrafts, and some guns. Because he, he's looking out for us from those dick-eating reptilians. We need to arm this man with as many heavy munitions as we can and just let him loose. Let him loose to patrol those fucking aliens. He knows who they are. He knows who they are. You could try to hide among the populace and wear your human suit. But General W. Woke... Or, I'm sorry, <laughs> General W. Ninja here. He's going to sniff you out and he's going to send an Abrams after your ass. Give me what I need to defend myself and my people. All right, that's what I need because I, I can't go quietly into the, in, in the night. Y'all ain't getting the job done. You not. You are not getting the job done. You done lost men trying to fight these motherfuckers. All right. Goddamn dick eating aliens. <laughs> the man just needs some fucking weapons to teach him a lesson. Well, apparently this channel. This is amazing. Oh, let me this channel is, <laughs> there's so much shit on this channel about reptiles. So I'm going to, I'll pull you, chat. You tell me what you're interested in. We, we got a whole smorgasbord of Draco reptoids exposed. Oh, we could listen about how reptilians travel. I mean, that's, America is built on evil European lies. <laughs> uh, David Icke's reptilian megalith. Lots of reptile videos. I think this is like an archive channel for all the woke videos about the reptile menace. How energy rituals work. Oh, we found a very glorious thing here. Alien gray intervention. Oh, I don't know. Uh, where do we even jump in? We've got so much to learn today about the reptilian menace. I don't I don't even know where to begin. Repstein? Is that what you're calling him? Uh, well, you know, hey, maybe, maybe when he's saying reptilians, it's code word for something else. I can't speak to that. I've only seen one of the man's videos. I've only seen just the one. 
Okay, let's let's see. Oh, how the uh, how the stage alien invasion will happen? Let's find out. And what that. I'm hoping it, it, that it's not is the fake. UFO attack that these guys have been planning for a long time. Oh, they've been, you know, Kobe. all the genetic engineering they've been doing at Dulce and all these places. That is so that they have an alien body that they've uh, taken this DNA material from dead aliens and they've made their own little alien copies that they can put inside this ship, attack us, and there's your bodies. There's your aliens, the bad guys. Instant bad guys. See? Genetic technology is a very powerful weapon. You know, makes perfect sense. Uh, genetically cloned dead aliens used to fake an alien invasion. Why would you need to fake it if you've got aliens you can genetically clone to kill to put in the flying saucers? Why not? Why wouldn't they just invade anyway if they're out there doing bad things? Who knows? Let's yeah. find out. So it's going to fool a lot of people because they're going to actually show them an alien body for the first time on, quote, national television where you get the truth, see? And once you see it on CNN, then it's got to be true, okay? And pretty soon they'll be killing billions. I would not hesitate to go to war with these people. They have to be stopped. See? So, yeah. They want to eat your dick? We need to fight back. All right, you don't want them eating your cock. You need to fight back now. They need to be taught, <laughs> need to be taught a lesson. This guy seems to have quite a lot of, a lot of videos. The truth about war in Israel. <laughs> Should, do we dare? Do we dare take a look at this video? Will D-Life execute me for putting this on? Chat, I need, I need some support here. I think I think we all know what we're getting into if I click on this. Are we watching it? Give me a one if you want to watch the truth about war in Israel. Give me a two if we should go to something else. Oh, okay. I've seen a lot of do-its. Oh, well, Rip D Live channel. Let's listen to this man give us the woke truth about those alien reptile dick-eating sons of bitches in Israel. And then when you get in a war, the first thing the military does is they turn the enemy into some subhuman species so that you're allowed to m kill them without uh, having it bother you, which is an insane fucking idea because that's why we're losing so many veterans every day from suicide. It's not just dealing with the VA and the government and the fucking bullshit, okay? It's their conscience and what they've been through, okay? They just can't take it because they realize it was wrong, okay? Every guy who ever pulled the trigger over there in Iraq, in the first war, did it for oil. They did it for the fucking petroleum companies. It wasn't for freedom for America. Okay? It had nothing to do with freedom or weapons of mass destruction, right? We found out that was fucking bullshit, and that's why we should be able to investigate the fucking president and the executive office. Because we could have told them, oh, the little vial, what you call it's holding up? Where the fuck did that come from? Let's go back, let's, let's trace back and do an investigation about how you came up with your information, and then you find out it's complete fucking bullshit, which is what I'm going to do at the Bank of America today, by the way. I have to go down and deal with those motherfuckers today. Um, people who... Wait, did I, did I mishear him? Is he going to go to the Bank of America and ask them about yellow cake uranium? I, I, hold on. Come from. Let's go back. Let's, let's trace back and do an investigation about how you came up with your information, and then you find out it's complete fucking bullshit. Which is what I'm going to do at the Bank of America today, by the way. I have to go down and deal with those mother. Excuse me, teller. <laughs> Get your fucking manager out here right now. I want to know about the Jews, the reptiles, and that yellow cake uranium. No, I don't have a gun. Get your fucking manager. Fuckers today. Um, people who do not remember the past are condemned to repeat it, especially not remembering the mistakes of the past, okay, because those become the mistakes of the present. And remember the millions who died from the last group of fucking mistakes, okay? And the people that are, I mean, we're losing 20 veterans a day now because they come home and it doesn't take very long to realize that what you were doing was fighting for fucking petroleum interest and fucking oil companies in the United States, okay? Instead of fighting for freedom or anything else, yeah, you might have done some good over there, but look what you look at the mess you fucking left, okay? And there are hundreds and hundreds of thousands of fucking innocent people who've died because of it. Come on, where's the Israel like I bit? Said, once you've seen the truth, <laughs> it's really hard to escape it. It hits you like.
dumpster. Find all that porn. It's the reptilians. They just want a banquet. They they're hungry. That's why they keep making all these videos, all this pornography. Oh well, you know, I know it's not reptiles, but I am curious how energy rituals work. I think I have some of this figured out on how the elites are using their black magic rituals and using our energy. Already sold me. Alien black magic rituals. Let's hear it. Think about that. It's one thing to use energy by torturing someone, raping someone, and they do. It's to get the energy raised for the ritual of killing someone to release the energy. But if they can get all our energy or as many people as possible with energy involved in that, it makes it much more powerful. And they do that against our, our knowing. You know, chat, if you met some girl on Tinder and you showed up at the date and it's this chick and she sits down across from you and the first thing out of her mouth is, what are your thoughts on black magic, alien sexual rape rituals? Are you, are you going to continue the date just the fucker? Or are you going to run for the door? I, I guess I need to pull chat on this. I don't know what I'd do in that situation. I mean, that is insane. But then again, sex. Which which direction are you going to go with that, chat? You tell me. I see a lot of gifts. A lot of dancing puddings. But I'm not... There's <laughs> people saying they'd smash that. Oh, would you? You going to hit that? Uh, your peepee's hard? Is that it, chat? R one person said run. <laughs> one person's running for the door. Everybody else is like, you know what? I've, d I've dated crazier. <laughs> Let's find out what this lovely lady has to say about uh, the alien rape dark magic rituals. But anything you focus your attention on is your choice to focus your attention on, even if you don't know what it's all about. So in that, we are guilty without really being aware that we're guilty. We're kind of manipulated into giving our energy over. Oh my god, she has this monotone voice that's putting me to sleep. It's like, is listening to this shit, it's like, oh, she's putting me in a trance to do her dark magic on me. I'm not falling for it. I'm not stupid. I know what this bitch is up to. She's going to have a reptile come out and eat my cock after she puts me to sleep. Not falling for it. Sorry, honey. <laughs> You're going to have to be trickier than that. Reptilian sacrifices. Yes, please. Let's hear about this. There were hundreds of these nine-foot reptilian guys standing with their legs. Hundreds. Yeah, they were all the way across the, uh, the wow. under, uh, underneath their vehicles. Okay. Standing so on the. Is this guy, what is this? All right, can, I don't know if it's showing my mouse on screen. Look at the top of his, is he wearing a wig? <laughs> did, you, did you see this? This is a fake wig. Like you can see his real hair right here. It's peeking out underneath. You, you can see the line where he glued it on his head. And this guy's, he's taking his security, his OPSEC very seriously. Doesn't want those dick-eating aliens to know that he told everybody about their sex rituals. So he put on the world's worst wig. The crater. And what do they look like? Uh, uh, they're ugly-looking uh, lizard, alligator-type people. They wow. got they got the same skin as the know. lizards got. Right. Okay, and terrible-looking faces. Mm. But then they have the ability to shift and look like a human. You know that reptilians and, and Draco, uh, you know, the blood sacrifices, the whole Luciferian thing, the, the kids being killed and eaten. I mean, that humans have been eaten and taken off planet, et cetera, et cetera, and used for slaves in other colonies, et cetera. I hate to say that, but that's far worse than what you've just said. It's okay. far worse. Yes, far worse. Uh, yeah. And uh, that the whole blood situation uh, is. Uh, I like like he's talking about aliens, <laughs> aliens killing and raping people and doing all this horrendous shit. And they spend like half a minute. It's like, yeah, they're pretty ugly. I wouldn't fuck them. Like, you know, if you if I met a reptilian and he wasn't going to eat my dick and it was like a date, they're pretty fucking hideous. Not not interested. Would not bang. Sorry, reptiles. Not Mr. Man and <laughs> Mr. World's worst wig would not fuck you. You're gonna have to find somebody else. Jordan Maxwell, I don't believe in UFOs. I've seen them. Oh, well, I bet you have. Oh, here we go. Oh, <laughs> buckle up. I found. I think we found a winner. How the reptilians deceived humanity. I wonder if this is the ninja. And these were the peoples. 
who first told me about a race of highly intelligent beings which they called the Chitauri, the Tokas, a race of creatures which look like reptiles who have ruled the world for hundreds if they were kings you heard him correctly <laughs> Jeez, i was hoping for a little more energy from our guy here it's not uh, i like the outfit so he has a very the great fashion of sense at the time of George oh it's david ike that's david ike interviewing him said to kathy o'brien she quotes in a book that an, a reptilian extraterrestrial race interbred with the ancient... Is this an outfit this guy is wearing, or did he wake up in a dumpster and just walk into this interview? It looks like just random shit is stuck to him. <laughs> what is this? It's just... I don't, what is this necklace? It looks like dead mummified babies are hanging from his neck. Central American people. Because they needed to create bloodlines through which they could operate. Yes. Um, when my father actually told me about um, having been at a... Oh, they didn't. I, I was hoping they'd stick with the crazy black dude. Now they had to go to some thought on the phone. He's going to tell her about my daddy said. Nobody cares. Nobody cares what your daddy said. Oh, that's his name. Credo Mutwa. Credo Mutwa. Given his hot takes to uh, David Icke. God, I, I need to... We need, one of these days we need to do a stream just dedicated to David Icke's early stuff because it's insane. And uh, that's the kind of shit I like. <laughs> I just, I knew there were Kangs that were really into, um, really into uh, the whole Egyptian shit, but I did not know that there was a woke section of the reptilian group. That sounds amazing. That's the kind of crossover that dreams are made of. That's the kind of crossover you just hope for. You hope you come across one day. <laughs> oh, the internet's full of the craziest shit. It's fucking fantastic. It's good stuff. Good stuff. Oh, you know, uh, today I was going to uh, look into the um, Slazo stuff. You know, there, there was this whole thing where this girl dropped these logs on this dude. Uh, they dated when, like, three or four years ago when they are both teenagers. Uh, his YouTube channel blows up. Uh, she becomes friends with a bunch of famous YouTubers. And then all these logs get dropped because they're, they were dating and they're still dating and they're off and on and all this shit. And she accuses him of being like this this sex pervert and uh, rapist and all of this stuff. And his, he's just getting shit on by everybody. And then it comes out that she wasn't 100% honest and these other YouTubers had maybe secondary motives for what they were doing. Might have been tied to competition and money. Uh, that they maybe were painting him as a rapist to get clicks and views and uh, to make money doing it, uh, speculation by some people out there. A lot of lot of weird, crazy shit. Uh, but if I go into that, that's going to be like an hour or two. I think I'm going to save that for Friday. Um, I think that'll be the, the Friday subject of the whole Slazo debacle. I mean, you got everything in that. You got some chick abusing puppies. You got another guy threatening to sue everybody. Uh, other people talking about, like, taking people down. It's really fucking weird. And it's all centered around Reddit-themed videos, which makes no goddamn sense. Why Why would you destroy somebody because their Reddit videos are doing better than yours? But it, that shit that's hanging out there. That's out there in the ether. Uh, but you know what? I, I, I think we're going to call it a day here. I'm going to go play some Earth Defense Force and practice, hone my skills for when the reptiles come to eat my penis. I need to be prepared for that. Best way to do it is an alien killing simulator like EDF. Just putting it out there, not getting paid by him. I'm not telling you that the producers of Earth Defense Force 5 are trying to protect you by getting you used to killing dick-eating aliens, but that's actually what they're doing. Uh, Friday, we will go over the Slazo thing. Uh, there are a couple other things, too. I'm going to dig around and try to find the... I want to find, like, that old-school David Icke shit. You know, that's that has potential, I think. And then I think we'll explore Above Top Secret, the forum itself, because there's some crazy shit on there uh, that's fucking amazing. So that'll be Friday. Uh, I hope you all have a good morning. Enjoy your time at work. Enjoy your time at school. Hopefully the week will treat you well. Uh, remember to cover your cocks when walking in public, especially if you're a black dude. Those aliens are hungry as shit. 
<laughs> you don't want to fall for it. And whatever you do, don't let Elon Musk put fucking electrodes into your head. It's a terrible idea. Don't let Google do it. <laughs> don't let Facebook do it. Don't let these corporations put shit that's wirelessly controlled into your fucking brain. There's no way to refund that. You can't just pull it out. Awful idea. Oh, that's dystopian as shit. I don't trust... I don't trust the people that make my smartphone. You think I'm going to let some asshole implant shit directly into my brain? Fuck no. I'll be the old boomer in 30, 40, 50 years. I'll be the old fucking curmudgeon that just is flipping off uh, the next... I, I don't even know what you're going to call them. Not Gen Z, not millennials. Whatever they fucking call them. Flipping off those stupid kids that are going to have all this shit implanted in their skulls. I'm going to be the old guy that can't compete. I'm going to be the old guy that is using antiquated technology with my fucking CB radio and flip phone. But at least I'll be able to say what I want. And Google, Facebook, uh, or what, what are they going to call it? The Goo Book, when they merge together in the acquisition that will happen 10 years from now. Goo Book won't control me. I'm going to fight back. I'm going to fight back against their brain Frankenstein radio-controlled communist computer god bullshit. I'm going to fight back against those dick-eating aliens. Now, I need to find, I need to find us a nice song to play out on. I don't know. What are we, what are we even going to do, to be honest with you here? We find, find a fancy song for us. Oh, my God. Unprepared. Terrible. Terribly unprepared. I should, I should have spent more time looking for songs and music to play, but I didn't. I got caught up watching Columbine, the big picture. It's like the only documentary about, isn't it weird? If you go on to uh, YouTube, if you want to watch any, like, news footage or documentaries about school shit, sure. any of that shit, it's, like, all gone. You, can, you can't find anything aside from, like, news clips. The only one that's still up is some dude made a, a documentary. I don't know how long it's even going to still be up there. Very, very weird. Terrible. Okay. You know, let's see. Let's, let's play us out with something... Something upbeat. <laughs> let's have let's have a Vocaloid sing us a song out because they're going to be controlling us like fucking biological cars soon enough. Have a good day, chat.